Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. This is Garvit Saxena, currently pursuing MTech IT 5 year integrated course from my IPS DVD. In this video, we will be discussing about Virtual Local Area Network, also known as VLAN, and Virtual Storage Area Network, also known as VSAN, which is guided by our Honorable Professor Dr. Vivek Srivastav Sir. This video is a part of our internal assessment of MTech curriculum. So without wasting any further, let's quickly jump into the video. So topics that we will be covering in this video are Why VLAN? What is VLAN and its working? What is the need of VLAN? Benefits of VLAN? What is vSAN and its working? And finally, we will be seeing the benefits of vSAN. Now, suppose we need 5 LAN with few devices in each LAN. So obviously, we need 5 switches to create this scenario, right? Now, can this task be achieved with just one switch? And that is what we will be discussing today in the topic VLAN. So instead of making a physical partitioning of a switch, we make the logical partitioning. So inside a switch, we are going to create multiple LAN and that is why we are calling it as virtual LAN or VLAN. And this logical partitioning is done at the layer 2 network of OSI model. Now let's see how VLAN actually works. So this in this scenario we are gonna create three virtual LANs. Let this be yellow VLAN, this be blue VLAN and this be green VLAN. These are the ports in the yellow VLAN, these are the ports in the blue VLAN and these are the ports in the green VLAN. The yellow VLAN devices are having the IP address scheme from 10.10.10.0. The blue VLAN devices are having the IP address scheme from 172.16.15.0. And lastly, the green VLAN devices having IP address scheme from 192.168.1.0. Suppose if this device wants to share some packets, then only these two devices can receive. As this is one LAN and these three ports belong to one LAN. And only these three devices can communicate with each other. Similarly, these three devices can communicate among themselves and these three devices can communicate among themselves. So if one device is sending a broadcast message, so only the devices in that lane will receive the broadcast message. So the broadcast message of this that is a yellow VLAN broadcast will not disturb the blue VLAN or the green VLAN. Now, since all the devices are connected to same switch, so what if this device wants to communicate with this device? Is it possible to do so? Actually, it is not possible now because this VLAN is having different IP addressing scheme. This VLAN is having different IP address scheme, uh, addressing scheme and this VLAN is having different IP addressing scheme. So obviously these two devices cannot communicate with each other as the devices belong to two different networks. So we need a router to do this. So we are having a router and we have connected it to a freely available port and this port is going to have the traffic of all the VLAN and that is why we call this port as trunk port. So this trunk line is going to have the traffic of the yellow VLAN, blue VLAN and green VLAN. VLANs are mutually isolated and packets can only pass between them via router. Now let's jump into the benefits of VLAN. Since the broadcast message of one VLAN is not going to disrupt the broadcast message of another VLAN, so it enables the security and privacy in a virtual network. Second thing is the cost reduction. So in place of purchasing uh, multiple switches, we are only purchasing a single switch and we are going to create a logical partitions in that switch. Okay. Then we have the better performance. So by enabling the virtual LAN mechanism, we are doing maximum utilization of the switch. Then it shrinks the broadcast domains. So since we are broadcasting a message in a single VLAN, so it shrinks the broadcast domains and it improves the IT staff efficiency and it also enables the simpler projects and application management. So I hope that now you have understood the concept of VLAN so far. Now let's shift to the virtual storage area network. Here we have one of the most famous diagram of VMware vSphere hypervisor. So here the idea is that now we are using the storage area network. Now the question arises, what is storage area network? This area here itself is a storage area network which is equipped with so many secondary storage devices. So not only the SSD and hard disk, but even the slower devices like CD, that is compact disk and the floppy disk can also be used, which can be a part of this storage devices. So the idea is that we have multiple servers which handles the user queries. So these servers are just taking the request by the user. So in order a request is ma made to handle or store the data. So this request is bypassed to the storage area network where the data is actually being stored in all of these devices like SSD, hard disk, etc, etc. So this is basically a centralized storage mechanism. 
Now let's understand what is virtual storage area network. So again, this entire space is now virtualized and these are our servers. And over this, we have implemented virtualization facility. Like we have used vSphere, which is equipped with the virtualized storage area network. Due to that, the number of VMs who wants to store their data, they will be using this facility to get their storage done. Okay. Uh, so now let's see the benefits that these VMs are going to get. So the availability of the VMs for the application will be enhanced. Higher application performance. Again, the same is with the performance. Okay. The application will work in a better way because we will not be facing any kind of downtime. The data is stored at the very huge storage area network and even if there are so many backups available, okay, so even if one server is down, other servers are available at the moment to provide the user access to his data. Then uh, it is centralized storage area network so you can also consolidate the storage. It means that we are not only limited to use SSD and hard disk but we can also use different different combination of secondary storage devices like floppy disk and other storage devices. And the, we can also easily transfer the data to remote sites using these virtual SAN networks. Then it is very simplified way to manage the data in a centralized manner. That is why the people and the companies nowadays are opting the feature of virtualized storage area network. So that's all from my side. I hope that uh, things about the VLAN and VSAN are now clear to you all. Thank you.